Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's watch party. We are on a seven-day detox fast, and this is the end of it. And I, I just think there's a lot of people saying, I wish we could continue this. Well, we're going to have another opportunity to continue this in January where we do our 21-day fast. What this has done, you know, in this period of time is drawn us closer to God. I'm hearing testimonies of lives that are being transformed. People are actually experiencing freedom. It's a good thing. But today what I want to do is I want to talk to you about the seven-day detox, but we're going to focus on one area that maybe a lot of us haven't thought about or maybe we don't even know about. So we're going to detox from the control of the sinful nature. See, a major part of the seven-day detox fast is to overthrow our sinful nature and put the Holy Spirit back in the place of the ultimate authority and influence over our lives. Some of us don't even know that we have two natures. You have a nature that you were born with. That nature you don't have to work on, you got it. You know, I, I remember when, before me and Lisa got married, I realized the two natures were fighting within me. And I had a real problem in my old nature. This is what I had. In my sinful nature, there was a lot of jealousy. And I was wondering, how can I be a Christian and then be so jealous? And I started realizing that there was a war within me. A war within me. If you have a war within you, you're not weird. This is just part of spiritual warfare. But you might be thinking, well, you know, I'm not a very good Christian if I have this war. No, it's just normal having this war within you. Every single believer has two natures. We have our sinful nature that we were born with. And I really believe there's a, there's a great scripture in Galatians. Paul was describing this war within every single one of us. And depending who's in charge or what nature is in charge is going to determine what kind of life we're going to live. Um, it's also going to determine our emotions. It's going to determine our results. It's going to determine our spiritual impact in the lives of others. So let's look in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, and let's look at the war that's within us. This is what we're doing during the fast. We're detoxing ourselves from our old sinful nature. I'm going to describe what the sinful nature is in just a moment. But let's look at the war in Galatians 5, 16. It says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives so you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Now we see really two forces and two powers within us. And in this portion of scripture, Paul is talking to the church and he says, why don't you go ahead? You're wondering, how do I defeat this old lifestyle, this old way of thinking? He goes, this is how you do it. Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. That says a lot. What he's saying in this is that we have a choice on who or what thoughts are in charge of our lives. He says, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives and this will be the result. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. In verse 17, it says this, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. So the sinful nature within us, every single one of us have it, want to do evil. And this is why Christians can actually still do evil. We have a potential for evil within us. And if we don't know that there's two natures, we might just think, we're evil. It's not that you're evil. It's that you have a nature that wants to do evil. And that nature comes up once in a while. You're on the freeway and someone cuts you off and you want to go back to your own nature and flip them off. They cut you off. This is what I do. I flip them off. And maybe you did it, but and then the Holy Spirit begins to rise up in you and say, what are you doing? You're no longer that person. Come on. Throw that, come on, throw that old behavior away. That has nothing to do with who you really are. So those things do happen. Or maybe you're at home after church and you guys had a great, really great church service. And, and then you go to your car and your wife does something that gets on your nerve. And you get mad again. 
And then your wife says, why are you going to church? And you come out of church and you have the same old evil attitude. It's just maybe you weren't aware. You have two natures. And we need to conquer that old nature or that old nature will conquer you. So let's look at the scripture. Look what it says. It says, then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. You know what this scripture is saying? That we still have cravings in our bodies, in our minds, we should not have. And this is why I don't trust Marco. I trust the Holy Spirit. Because we're all capable of doing things we never thought, we thought we were over with, or we thought, man, I'll never do that. Be careful that you say you'll never do that on your own strength. I'll never do it with God leading me or the Holy Spirit leading me because he'll help me conquer the cravings or the desires of my old sinful nature. But verse 17, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. So the scripture is describing two different desires within us. A desire to do evil, a desire to lust, a desire to be angry, a desire to take revenge. And then we have this other desire that wants to love, that wants to forgive, that wants to please God, that wants to save souls. So we have two natures inside of us and they have opposite desires. You're not crazy. You're not even bipolar. You're just a Christian and you're in war. Look at this. And the spirit gives us desires. And I love this. The spirit gives us desires. You know, the, there's a scripture that says that God will give you the desires of your heart. And, and there's two ways to interpret that scripture. One way to interpret that scripture is this. God's going to give me everything I want. And there's another way to interpret that scripture is that God will give you his desires in your heart. And that's why we as new, Christ, uh, new believers, something happens that we have new desires. You know, on, on New Year's Eve, we come here and we have a big New Year's Eve party here at the house of God. We celebrate New Year's with God. And the place is usually packed out. They have, we have overflow. And you start wondering, why would a whole bunch of people come to church on New Year's Eve? They should be at the casinos or maybe they should be, at, at, they should be in, in Las Vegas or they should be partying. Well, something happened that now this person has new desires and these new desires are more pleasurable and satisfying than the old desires. It is amazing. Tonight you're tuning in. You know, back in the day, you wouldn't be tuning into a service. Why are you turning in, tuning into a service? Because you have new desires. That's your new nature. And you know what's so wonderful? We do not need to be led by our old person or the old way of living, the old sinful nature. We can be led by our new nature that was created to be like Christ. And if it's created to be like Christ, we can be like Christ. We can experience Christ's emotions, Christ's results, and Christ's purpose in our lives. But look at the scripture. And the, the, the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. So we have these two desires within us. And I'm going to say this. It's your choice. Once again. It's your choice. Which desire are you going to go with? And fasting, what it teaches us to do is say no to the sinful desires and say yes to the spirit desires. And that should develop as a discipline in our lives. If we could develop that discipline, we are undefeatable. Our lives will end up accomplishing everything that God has called us to accomplish. It will end up better than we can believe or ask or think. God has a purpose for our lives. Jesus came to give us an abundant life. But that abundant life can only be received, can only be experienced by a spirit-led life, not a sinful nature life. But it says, so these two forces, look at the scripture, these two forces are constantly fighting each other. And some will be thinking, will that war ever end? Well, not really. That war is going to be a constant war within you and me, and we're going to continue making decisions who is going to be in control. So these two forces are, are, are fighting within us. Where's the fight? 
It's right there within us, in, fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. So the sinful nature has an end game or end goal, and this is the goal of the sinful nature. Stop you and me from doing what God has called us to do. We have good intentions, but if you're being led by your sinful nature, you'll never fulfill the intentions, the desires, the vision of God in your life. Some of, right, some of us right now are totally unfulfilled. And you're wondering, when is it going to turn around? And God's giving you a key today. It's going to turn around when you overthrow the leadership of the sinful nature in your life. And you go back to allowing the Spirit of God to leave your lives. You're not just going to have good intentions. You're going to have good results. Come on, give God some praise out there. We just don't want to have just good intentions. Well, I really meant to, but we want to get good results. So the sinful nature, what is the definition of sinful nature? I'm not going to rush through this teaching because I don't know if it's one teacher or 10 teachings, but I'm going to slow it down. But right now we're laying a foundation of understanding we have two natures fighting inside of us with two different desires and two different destinations. But the sinful nature, let's describe that. This is really what it is. It's described as the old self, the old self. Every one of us have an old self that can come back and take over your life if you don't watch it. Just because you've been 90 days sober doesn't mean that old addict won't try to come back up. Just because you conquered conquered pornography for, you know, six months doesn't mean that you just don't just go for that clickbait and it comes, oh, the old self, the old perverted self, the old pornographic self starts coming back up. It could come back. Just because you've been having patience and you've been doing really good doesn't mean that the old you can't come back up. And I think we start thinking when the old person comes back up and we see it, best in others, we start thinking, well, maybe they never were a Christian. No, it's not that they never were a Christian. Maybe they didn't realize that the old self is still there waiting for a resurrection. <laughs> it could happen. The old you can come back. If you're not aware, we need to be aware. So it's the old self or unrenewed self. And I want you to get this, is that your sinful nature cannot be renewed or it cannot be fixed. It's already corrupted. It's bad. It will never obey God. It will never want to do God's will. It will always fight against God. So we're not trying to fix the old nature. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to deny and overthrow the, ne the old nature and not give it place, a place of authority and influence over our lives. So it also means the person you used to be, sinful nature, the person you used to be. This should be... I, this is what I believe. If you're a Christian, there should be a change in your life. If there's no change in your life, then maybe you never were born again. You never were saved. But there's a person you used to be before Christ, B.C., before Christ. And then there's a new person that God has called you to be and he's given you the power to be. But look at the scripture. I mean, this definition. It means the flesh. Have you ever heard that? Man, he's in the flesh. And what we're saying is the sinful nature's in control. I'm going to give you an example in just a second. How I got in the flesh. I think it was just yesterday, day before. Uh, it means former conversations. Say it with me. For, the sinful nature is former conversations. So we don't realize that sometimes we're getting into the sinful nature by just going in to former conversations, we start talking the way we used to talk. You know what, what the scripture, the scripture is really basically saying? Let the Holy Spirit even guide your conversations. There's conversations that we should not be involved with. But if we let the Holy Spirit guide our conversations, this is what's going to happen. The, the sinful nature will not be able to take charge. But keep on going. For, um, it means former conversations, former conduct, behavior, the nature that is apart from God, prone to sin and opposed to God. So it's a nature that is prone to sin, not prone to sin, it sins and it opposes God. That's a nature that we all have. Another name for it is human nature. Have you ever heard someone say, well, that's just human nature? That's what, you know, that's just what humans do. Yeah, it's human nature. It's your 
sinful nature. We have an awareness at this moment that we have a sinful nature. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, me and Lisa, we're fasting and we've done the seven day fast and I think I, I did an extra day. And, and we were at dinner, it might have been last night or the night before, and we went to P.F. Chang's. But I'm hungry. It's right around 7 something because they didn't see this right away. And, and then it took a while to get the food. And we ordered something called lettuce wraps. And we ordered lettuce wraps. And all it is is lettuce. So it's like a little lettuce and some meat. And then they have some fillers like little noodles like, or like air noodles. You, could, you can't even taste them. So I told Lisa, I go, Lisa, can you, because I'm, like, I'm hungry. And she has the, she has the only thing that we can eat, and it's on her side, the, the lettuce wraps and all the meat and the fillers that taste like air are sitting right there. I go, Lisa, can you make me a lettuce wrap cup? So what you're supposed to do is take the meat and then put it in a little cup of lettuce, and then you eat it. And it has a little sauce you put over it. So my mouth is watering because I haven't ate all day. I'm hungry. So Lisa makes me one of these lettuce wraps but it, all it has is a little bit of meat and a whole bunch of air noodles. So I'm like, the old me's coming up. The old me's coming up. And I, and I said, Lisa, could you put more meat in it? And then she starts switching and she's got to start to get another lettuce cup. I go, no, 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 no. This is very easy. Just put more meat in it. It's not that hard. So now I'm going to tell you, that's the old me. The old me can be sarcastic. The old me can be impatient. But then the new me pops up. And it says, you are fasting. And this is exactly why we're fasting. You should not be talking to Lisa that way. And a matter of fact, you're being a bad example to the waitress. So now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that's so true. And I just said a statement, right? But the waitress is standing there. And you know what's crazy about this waitress? There's a whole bunch of people that work in that place. She's the only one that I know, and she's the only one that I know has come to our church, and she's the only one that I know that knows that I'm a pastor, and she loves me. So now I'm not only walking in the flesh, saying something that's impatient, it's part of my own nature. Could it be I'm also affecting her faith? And that little moment of me walking in my sinful nature, I pray that God gives me mercy and I didn't mess up my witness with her. That's the sinful nature. It can come up. And some of us, you know what we're saying? Well, that's just the way I am. Well, yes, that's the way you were born and that's the nature that you have. And that's why Jesus, when he died and you place your faith in him, he gave you a new nature, not to be like you, to be like Christ. Let's come on. That's a revelation of somebody. That I no longer need to be controlled by the old me. It's important because you can be identifying yourself with the wrong nature. That's just the way I am. And that nature is never going to change the way you've been. But there's a nature, the Holy Spirit, a new nature. It's the nature of Christ. The first nature we inherited from Adam and his sin. The second nature, as a believer, we inherit from Jesus Christ himself. The new nature has the character of Christ, has the power of Christ, has the love of Christ. And what, you know what it does? It helps us be like Christ. Oh, I love this. We can be like Christ because God has given us the new nature to be like Christ. But we must realize we're in a battle and we need to make a decision. So let's talk about just two quick facts. Say with me, two quick spiritual facts. Two facts. One, every believer has a sinful nature and a new nature. The old nature looks like, talks like, and acts like Satan. <laughs> the old nature looks like, talks like, and acts like Satan. Our new nature was created to be like Christ. So the new nature acts like, talks like, and looks like Jesus. I love that. You know what that means is I, you and I, 
can be like Jesus. We no longer need to depend on our own willpower and our own nature because that can't be fixed. We now can depend on the spirit of God in us and the nature of Christ in us. We can be like Christ, but it's still a choice. Look at Ephesians 4.22. Look what it says to do with this old nature. This is what we're supposed to do with the old nature. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Throw off. So every believer is instructed to throw off the old sinful nature. So this is what we're, God is saying. Participate in, in your sanctification or participate in making a choice to walk in what nature you're going to walk in. Now, it describes throw off. Say it with me. Throw off. And you know what that means? It means to put off, lay aside, lay down, put away at once and for all, be done with. Like be done. There's some things, like I remember when I told you I had that jealousy problem. And I, I would tell myself, this is what happened when I had that jealousy problem with Lisa before we got married. I would ask her a question based on the crazy thoughts that were coming in my mind. And I'd get a crazy, jealous thought, and then I'd ask her a question. I'd get a crazy, jealous thought and just ask her a question. And then I wanted to know about every ex-boyfriend she ever had. and Did she really love them? And she says, no, I never loved them. I only love you. I go, you're lying. And it didn't matter how many questions I asked Lisa. I was never satisfied. And then she would start crying. And, and I go, you're only crying to cover up something. That's how evil and it was in my whole sinful nature. It's evil. And I remember she got a car and I got so mad. I, I wouldn't hit Lisa, but I would hit stuff. And I remember breaking the dashboard in her car and just breaking stuff. The old sinful nature doesn't do good stuff. And then I would promise her, Lisa, I promise you this. Uh, I'm done. I'm so sorry. I won't do it again until next time. And then the old sinful nature would take over again. Oh, jealous demon would take over. And I would ask her another question and another question and another question. It got to the point that, G, that Lisa didn't want to hang around me because she always felt I was interrogating her. And I started realizing this doesn't make me feel good at all. I'm hurting Lisa. And no matter what, it's an empty hole in my heart. This is what I did. I had to throw off the sinful nature. It was not going anywhere. You know, it's kind of like this. It describes it as taking off your clothes. Like take off the old clothes and put on the new clothes. Take off the old nature and put on the new nature. So I remember I was in a real estate class. I wasn't even in church. And I wrote a letter to God. I go, God, your word says that who you set free is free indeed. And I know I'm not free. And I know you're not the problem. I'm the problem. Please set me free. And then I felt the new nature speak to me. And this is what the Holy Spirit told me. He goes, Marco, I'm going to set you free. But this is important. You can't ask another jealous question again. Because if you do, the old thing that you're being set free will come right back. How bad do you want to be set free? So I had to throw it off so that I could, put, I could put freedom on. I could put love on. I could, put, I, could, I could put Jesus on. Could it be that we still have our old, give it that, we have our old way of dressing and we're a new person. You know, I think as a Christian, let's just talk about clothes for a minute. And this is not the message, but as Christians, I don't think we should wear provocative clothes. I think that there was a way we used to dress and some of the things that we used to wear were provocative and they were lustful. And some of you ladies will wear things to attract men. And now when you became a Christian, God says, tone down, be modest. D tone down that, those clothes. And some of you, listening to your new nature, have thrown away old dresses old Daisy Dukes, crazy, 
right? Real low-cut dresses and you're, you just threw, I mean, low-cut blouses and, and you just threw them away because the Holy Spirit or your new nature tells you that's not how you're supposed to dress now and you've thrown away. For guys, it might be you used to be a gangster and you used to wear certain colors and, and God says, why are you still affiliating yourself with the Crips, the Bloods, the Southsiders, the tagging crew you're with? That clothes has a spirit attached to it and it's tied to your old nature. And you got to throw that stuff away or throw it off. We need to do that in the physical realm, but we also need to do that in the spiritual realm. There's some things that we need to throw off. Jealousy, anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, worry, fear. I don't know, maybe it's greed or pride. I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, but I'm super prideful. We need to throw all that stuff away. Maybe rejection. That's the way you used to think. You're no longer rejected. You're no longer unworthy. Jesus died for you. Jesus loves you. Come on, get, get your new identity. Don't associate yourself with who you used to be. Associate yourself and get your identity who God created you to be in Christ. Give God some praise right there in the living room, in your, I don't know, in your closet, wherever you are, in your car, or in line at McDonald's right now in the fats, right now in your drive through there. <laughs> but throw it off. Someone say, throw it off. Just like we would do that with clothes, we need to do that with our old behavior. And if we're willing to throw it off, God will, this is what we, when we throw it off, this is what we need to do now. And now put on something. Just say, throw it off and then what? Put on. Don't just, don't just throw it off. Put something else on. Put on the spirit. Put on the word. Let the spirit lead your life. But let's look at this for just a second more about this throwing off the old nature. The old sinful nature is corrupted by lust and deception. So what is the whole old, old sinful nature about? It's about lust and what? Deception. And what does lust and deception do? Corrupt. The word corrupt means make morally bad or evil. It means to spoil. It means to ruin by your moral influence. It means to debase or make impure by adding the inferior. It means to be depraved, perverted, wicked, evil, infected, tainted, decayed, rotten, to mar, spoil, to infect, make unacceptable. So I don't want this. I mean, that's not the list that I want. That list sounds really bad. That list sounds perverted. That list sounds wicked. That list sounds evil. That, that, wicked, that list sounds very dark. But how do you get that list? Is walking in your own sinful nature. Now, the old, old sin for nature is full of lust. This is not a new trick. But I want you to get this. Lust and deception come together. You can't have lust without deception. From the beginning of time, God, I mean, Satan stood before Eve and Adam. Well, Eve especially. He goes, Eve. Look at that tree. Isn't it beautiful? And the Bible says that she was convinced that it was beautiful and it would be good for her. And then he, deception, lust, built desire. Look at it. Look at it. You want it. You want it, right? And then he lied to her and said, you know what? If you eat of that tree, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be just like God. And the, the deception of lust, this is a big deception of lust, is that we think if we participate in it, it'll give us what we want. But see, I want you to get this. When we're led by our sinful nature and we're led by lust, we don't get what we want. We get what we don't want. It doesn't lead us to life. It leads us to death. I'm going to give you an example of lust with deception. Why do you need deception with lust? Because if it didn't have, if it didn't have deception, it wouldn't work. Actually, we're lusting for it and we're thinking, it's going to give us what we want. It's going to lead us to a place of fulfillment. We're going to be satisfied. And actually, it leads to emptiness. I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you're a Christian and you believe this lust with deception idea or argument. You believe this. You know what? What I believe? I believe that before I get married, I need to test out my girlfriend sexually to make sure we're compatible. But it's a lie. But you're justifying what you're ready to do. And say, why are you sleeping with your girlfriend? It's not because I want to be sexually active. I'm just checking compatibility. 
So the lie is this, that if I sleep with her, I'm going to prepare for my marriage to make sure we're sexually compatible. So it's promising you something that it could never deliver. And this is the deception of our sinful nature. Our sinful nature makes promises or writes checks you can't cash. It always leads to emptiness. It always leads to death. It always leads to destruction. But think about it. You have this deception and this lust as the foundation of your future marriage. So now you're sleeping with her. We're having fun. We're still coming to church and we're raising dirty hands to the Lord. Because we're touching stuff we shouldn't be touching. We're looking at stuff we shouldn't be looking at. But we're still thinking, I'm going to be blessed and we're going to have a great marriage. And it's all a lie. Because the sinful nature doesn't lead you to great. It only leads you to great loss, great pain, great suffering, and great deception. That's it. So now you're involved with her sexually and you're justifying it. I just did it to make sure we're preparing. It's part of the practice Prepare, preparation process of marriage. And this is what happens. Now you have this foundation, you're married. And the thing you don't want is now beginning to unfold. Your wife now is committing adultery with somebody else. Your husband is now committing adultery with somebody else. Now you're talking about divorce. The marriage is unsatisfying. Because the truth is, lust will not lead to satisfaction. You know this. No amount of lust can ever satisfy you. It's an empty hole. The more you feed your lust, the emptier you get. I was talking to the team back there, and, and I, was, I saw some guy on YouTube, not this week, so don't, don't think I was cheating, but it was like two months ago. And I, I saw this guy on YouTube, and he has probably, I don't know, 3 million, 4 million followers. He made all his money um, originally in casinos um, playing, playing poker. He made millions of dollars playing poker. And they were doing a documentary on him of where he lives. He lives in Beverly Hills, and I think he has a $30 million house. And they were looking at him, and he has a $30 million house, and they also showed his cars. He has Ferraris, Lamborghinis, and, and a whole bunch of them. And most of them only have 1,000 miles, 500 miles, hardly any miles. And, you know, he has, he has girls. I mean, they show all the, he has girls like Playboy models all around him. And he's sleeping with all these girls. And they interviewed him, and they said, are you satisfied because you're the most eligible bachelor out there? You got money. You got a beautiful house. You have all the girls you want. You're famous. You got, you got everything. And he said, no, I'm not satisfied. He goes, do you understand that I'm living right now a life that almost can find no happiness and satisfaction because the bar is so high? I have everything this world has to offer. And how far can the bar be raised for, for me to get my next high or my next satisfaction? And then they ask him, do you remember any time you were happy? He goes, well, I remember one time I was in Mexico and I was with my friends on the beach and we're just hanging out. And poor people can do that. And I realized that was my happiest moment. Not through lust, but through relationships. And could it be today that you've been following your sinful nature? Your sinful nature, will, yes, it'll lead you to the drugs and it'll lead you to the lust and it'll lead you to the jealousy and it'll lead you to the impatience and it'll lead you to the anger and it'll lead you to being controlling and it'll lead you to depression. It'll lead you to all these things. But if you're on the track of your sinful nature, your old you is leading you. This is why we're fasting. We're not on a diet. We're detoxing ourselves from everything that's stopping us from getting close to God and fulfilling our spiritual purpose and actually experiencing the abundant life, the joy, the peace of God, and also being an impact as people are looking at Jesus in us. So God has given us his spirit 
and his, his nature so we can be like him, so people can see Jesus in us. They'll never see Jesus in us when we're walking in our old nature and then deceiving ourselves. That's just the way I am. I can't change. You know a man has desires. That's all the deception that's coming across with your lust, your desires, and the bad habits that we've developed. But I got good news for you. There's an option. Good news. Say it with me. Good news. There's an option. We can walk in the spirit. You know, I, I covered fact number one. Every believer has a, a sinful nature and a new nature. And I want to just do fact number two real quick. Every believer can choose to be led by the spirit and walk in the new nature. We can make this decision. Ephesians 4.23 says this. It said, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Even though our minds, our thoughts have been corrupted by our old self, I got good news for you. Your thoughts can be renewed by the power of the Spirit of God leading your life. It's not over. So, man, I just, I've, I've, I've polluted my mind. I understand that. I believe all of us have polluted our minds, polluted our attitudes. But just because you polluted your attitude, there's some good news. You can choose to no longer be led by your sinful nature. And you can choose to be led by the Spirit. And this is what the Spirit will do. One of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to renew your thoughts and your attitudes. So God's not just interested in what you're thinking. He's also interested in how you're acting. This can all be renewed by the power of God. That means it can be restored, be made brand new, be made what it should be. We're one decision away. Now, I'm going to cut this short because I got so much more to talk about. But let's just go ahead and get to the nitty gritty. If you're a believer, you have two natures. You have your sinful nature and you have your new nature that was created to be like Christ. The old nature, if you continue walking in that, you look more like the devil <laughs> than you do God. It doesn't shine any light. No one will ever be impacted by your life. And it promises all kinds of pleasure and success, but it leads to defeat. It leads to emptiness. And eventually, it'll lead you to eternal misery in hell forever and ever. But there's a new nature that you as a believer have. And that's the nature of Christ. And you can be like Christ, love like Christ, the joy of Christ, the peace of Christ, the gentleness of Christ, the kindness of Christ, the self-control of Christ, the faithfulness of Christ. You say, Pastor, are you talking about the fruits of the Spirit? That's exactly what I'm talking about. You, you know what the fruits of the Spirit are? Are the character of Christ just revealed. And the Spirit, as we let the Spirit lead us and we put on the Spirit, this is what's going to happen. You can actually, the Holy Spirit will produce the character of Christ in you. All we have to do is overthrow. Sin, oh you, oh me, you're no longer going to rule. Just like I had to do with the jealousy. Jealousy, you're no longer going to rule. I overthrew it. I take it off. I took it off. And I've never asked Lisa another jealous question again. And we've been now married for 31 years. I never asked her another jealous question again. And guess what? The sinful nature never took over. Jealousy left. And it's like an old, I'm just some old clothes. I threw away it in the trash. And then I just left it there. You know, I wrote a letter to God that time I got set free. And you know what God told me? Take that letter and throw it in the trash. And I took that letter and threw it in the trash. You know what that was saying? I'm done with it. Could it be? you've not overcome your sinful nature is because you haven't been final with it. You haven't like, I'm done with it. I'm going to destroy that thing that leads me to my sinful nature. It's time to clean house. Maybe we need to go into our house today and just clean it up. There's maybe videos they need to get rid of. Oh, I mean, it could be clothes that you need to get rid of. It could be, it could be some drug things that you need to get rid of. It could be some pictures or some apps you need to get rid of because they cook, they come on, they hook you, they right, tie you back into your old sinful nature. You know what the process is for you to get back to your old self and before your old self is there alive and well. Today's your day to be set free. Today's your day to throw off the old, 
you and put on the new you. You can do this. And maybe you're out there saying, Pastor, I only have the old me. I've never been saved. Now, if you've never given your life to Jesus and been born again, you don't have two natures. All you have is one nature. And you're wondering, can I, and you've tried to like change that nature, but it's unrenewable. It's always there. You could drop one drug habit and pick up another drug habit, drop one habit and pick up another bad habit, but you could never be totally free because you're bound or you're addicted and that nature promises you a lot of good stuff, but it leaves you empty. And you've gone enough times around the circuit and you realize, man, I am empty. I need hope. I need a new beginning. I need a new start. And you can have that today. And this is how you have that. Place your faith in Jesus Christ. Repent of your old way of living. Just say, I'm tired of the way I've been living. I'm tired of the anger. Just like me, I'm tired of the jealousy. I'm tired of living a selfish life. I'm tired of the emptiness. I'm tired of the depression. I'm just tired. I want a new life. I want a new nature and you can have it today because everyone that repents of their sins and places their faith in Jesus Christ, you know what they get? The gift of the Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of God. I'll say this, the spirit of Christ comes and lives within you. How powerful is that? And if Christ is in you, filling your, your spirit with his presence and his, his power you can live a new life. It's a miracle. I don't know how it happens. It's kind of like wind. Wind is here and you could feel it when it's blowing into, blowing into a room or blowing. You could feel it messing up. You can't see it, but the power is there. The spirit of God is right there in your living room. He's knocking at your heart's door. Jesus is knocking at your heart's door. He said, will you let me come in and give you a brand new life? Let me give you eternal life. And give you the power to overcome the old life, the old sinful you. You don't need to be identified with that person anymore. Let's pray. If you want to pray and you say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want a new nature. You can have it. Or maybe you're saying, Pastor, I've been walking in my old sinful nature. And I didn't realize I had a new nature. And I'm done with that old nature. I'm ready to throw it away. Throw it out. So I could walk in the newness of my new nature in Christ. You could do it. God's giving you the spirit. God's giving you the power. We can do this. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I make a choice today to throw off the old so I can walk in the new. Forgive me, Lord, for following the leading of my sinful nature or the old me. Set me free from its habits, from its addictions, and fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Save me. Make me new. I receive the free gift of your Holy Spirit and eternal life. I now am a new person in Christ. And I have a new nature that I can walk in. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it, and maybe you said it for the first time, uh, the biggest miracle of all is happening now. You've become a brand new person with the Spirit of Christ actually living in you. You know what that means? Be aware. You have new desires. And yes, you have a war within you, but you're just a choice away. Every morning, just wake up and just say, I put on Christ. I'm following my new nature. I'm done with the old nature. I'm following Christ. And I'm going to get the thoughts of Christ, the love of Christ, the results of Christ, and the power of Christ every day of my life. God bless you. We love you. If you just got saved, go to online. It says, I got saved. I got saved.com. I got saved.com. And we'll help you with your next steps. 
that was just the first step be led by the spirit the spirit is going to lead you to igotsaved.com and we're going to help you with your next steps in your spiritual growth god bless you we love you congratulations on your seven day detox some of you are continuing to detox maybe uh, uh four more days we started sunday continue doing it it's going to be a great it's going to cause great growth in your spiritual walk and people are going to see christ in you and your life's going to impact their lives god bless you we love you remember this if god is for you there's no one that could come against you god bless you we love you